Chapter 4, The Chain Clanks. It was the day before Christmas that the village conscience telephoned the Linden Bank. I felt that I must call you up, Mr. Sawyer, she said firmly, and tell you that the boy you have with you over Christmas is going around from door to door, ringing the bell and begging. Begging? Perhaps I shouldn't call it just that, but, well, saying Merry Christmas rather hopefully. Feeling rather sick, Abner Sawyer formally thanked his informer and rang off. Glancing out of his office window, he saw with a shock that instead of Austin White, who usually drove him home at night, Jimsy and Peggy, the old Sawyer mare, were waiting beneath a snow-ridged elm with the sleigh. Jimsy caught his eye, smiled warmly, and waved. And because Abner Sawyer did not know what else to do, he stiffly returned the salute and reached for his hat, irritably conscious that sufficient sleep and food had already left their mark upon his guest. Jimsy's cheeks above the old-fashioned tippet Aunt Judith had wound about his throat were smooth and ruddy. Aunt Judith didn't want me to come, explained Jimsy, but I told her how Gink Gunningham often let me drive his truck, and I guess I coaxed so hard she had to. Uncle Mr. Sawyer, it's, it's nearly Christmas Eve. Abner Sawyer climbed in without a word. Peggy flew off with a jingle of bells through the village, through the woods, through a Christmas Eve twilight dotted now with homely squares of light shining jewel-wise among the snowy trees. Jimsy, yes, sir, a lady telephoned that you've been begging from door to door. Jimsy hung his head. I, I only rung some doorbells and said Merry Christmas. You expected and received money? Yes, sir. Why? Silence. Jimsy, I insist upon an explanation. Jimsy gulped and faced Abner Sawyer, his eyes blazing with heartbroken disappointment through tear-wet lashes. Uncle Abe, he choked, it, it was a Christmas surprise for you and Aunt Judith. A great tear rolled slowly upon the tippet. I, I seen a book on fancy carpentering, and I, I didn't have no money, and, and a thimble. It ain't silver, but it's most a good. And then Jimsy lost his mooring, and with a sob, and cried his heart out upon the sleeve of Abner Sawyer. I, I got the book bu buttoned under my coat, he blurted out after a while. And Uncle Abe, I'm awful sorry about the doorbells and the fellas do at home. Abner Sawyer would have been less than human if the boy's tragedy had not touched him. Why, he asked huskily, why did you wish to give me a Christmas present? Because, cried Jimsy passionately, you're so awful good to me in stump, and so's Aunt Judith. And I thought maybe you never had nobody ever give you a present and mean it like I did, or, or what, Jimsy, or you'd feel different about Christmas. The first citizen took the reins himself, tucked Jimsy in beneath the fur robe, and drove home in silence, conscious only that the world was awry and he hated the village conscience. Nor was he quite himself at even after supper was done, and Jimsy, a little tearful still in his disappointment, safe in bed. Abner began Aunt Judith from her chair by the fire. Yes, said Mr. Sawyer coldly. He wished Judith would not talk. She rarely did. He was tired and upset and probing desperately within from some remnant of the cold complacence of a week ago. The minister was here today. He, he told me how Miss Dorgan took Jimsy in from the street. She drinks. He hasn't a real home. The minister would like to to find one for him. Jimsy again. He must fling away his chain now or feel it clank. That, said Uncle Abner, that, said Abner Sawyer resentfully, is of no interest to me. There was pitiful, hard-wrung bravery in Aunt Judith's face. Only a passionate surge of feeling could have swept away the silence and repression of the years. Only a woman's emotion, wild and maternal, for all its starving inevitable as the law of God, could have left a barrier so fixed and unrelenting. Abner, she said desperately, I, I want to keep Jimsy. I, I can't bear to see him go. Judith. There was more in the single word, of course, than Aunt Judith could know. There was an unread paper and a biscuit, a tailless dog invading sanctity, a boy yelling by a woodpile, and now the memory of a twilight ride and the tears of a choked lad upon his sleeve. An irritating record of moments of weakness, which it behooved a first citizen to stamp out of his life forever. 
And Judith read in his face an inexorable death sentence of her hope and rose trembling. You are a hard, cold man, she said, very white, and the house is so lonely. I hate it. I hate it, quivered Aunt Judith with a long, shuddering sob. There's no one to love in it, no one, and everything Speck said to Jimsy was true. And then, crying and shaking, she was gone, and Abner Sawyer went with stumbling feet to the privacy of his workshop. His face death white, the pompous illusions of his little world were tumbling in ruins about him. He had said with frequent unction that he was a hard man, interpreting that phrase liberally in terms of thrift, economy, and substantial common sense in his world through the mouth of an urchin, had flung back to him the galling words miser and skinflint, miser and skinflint. They had fawned to his face and flouted at his back, gossiping of servants and made-over gowns and kindling. Up and down the quiet workshop walked Abner Sawyer, clinging in an agony of humiliation to the loyalty of a little urchin. It was all he had, he had told himself fiercely, all he had. Jimsy alone saw him as he was and liked him. No heart, no Christmas tree, no one in the house to love. He must prove them to Specs, to Jimsy, to Judith, to the Middletons, to all of Linden. Turning with hot anger in his heart, he saw a book upon his workbench and picked it up. Abner Sawyer faced the pitiful fiasco of Jimsy's Christmas gift. With a great lump in his throat and his eyes wet, he glanced at the flyleaf. To Uncle Abe, it said, from Jimsy, Christmas greetings. The door clicked as it had clicked the night before and the night before. Unc Mr. Sawyer, said Jimsy sleepily, I most forgot to come. I was so awful tired and sleepy. Ain't... Ain't sick, are ye, Uncle Abe? Your face is awful queer. I I don't know, said the first citizen hoarsely. I, I think I am. Go to bed, Jimsy, and thank you for the book. Jimsy went back to bed. He did not know, nor did Aunt Judith, or Uncle Ab or <laughs> I keep trying to call him Uncle too, or Abner Sawyer, that presently he was the sole keeper of the house save Stump snoring in the kitchen for Abner Sawyer was furtively driving Peggy into a village that knew him only by repute, and Aunt Judith, having slipped away in white defiance to Cousin Lemuel's down the road, was driving into Linden with the surreptitious savings of many years in the old-fashioned pocket of her gown. <laughs>